fractal pattern that crops up in the show, um, the, 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 the sort of the trident, the three spires, uh, is, is essentially a representation of the geometry of this triple helix that the alien signal is, is creating. The triple helix is the fundamental DNA of the alien life form that's trying to take over our planet, and that uh, fractal pattern is its signature. Molecules like DNA, not only complex in the sense that they have literally millions of atoms in them, but they're also geometrically very complex. So the fractal that you see on the show, that's such a sort of a, um, a signature of the show, is actually the geometric representation of this triple helix. And whenever the alien signal is broadcast somewhere, you see one of its manifestations is this fractal pattern. And the triple helix is actually something that people have been experimenting with in the laboratory. Uh, scientists have been able to splice genes into the double helix of typical DNA and create a sort of a third rail on this ladder. And that's something that is just being done in the laboratory. Chaos theory is not so much about chaos in the sense of everything being crazy and random, but of actually finding patterns in what looks like chaos. And I think that that's one of the things that makes a show like Threshold even more compelling is that it's not far off the mark in terms of what's really happening science-wise, what, what is and isn't possible. For those who embrace the change and the newness, they are coming into a new way of being, the new Superman. The third strand of DNA developing in your body makes you a Christ, a living, holy trinity. In realizing yourself as the living trinity, you will move beyond duality. The new amino acids will make it easier for your brain to fire off the new codes. Masonic author John T. Lawrence said, Thus we Masons have three degrees, three great lights, three lesser lights, three principal officers, three assistant officers, three sets of three working tools, three steps, three pillars, three ornaments, three articles of furniture, three movable jewels and three immovable jewels, three grand principals, three assassins, three searching lodges, three who rule a lodge, three grand masters, and three orders of architecture. What do you think they were talking about? In fact, the respect paid by Freemasons to this number goes far to suggest that our mysteries have affinities not only with the Egyptian rites and ceremonies, but with those of a good many other nations. In the mythologies of Greece and Rome, the thunderbolt of Jupiter was three-forked. Three-strand DNA, triple helix. The scepter of Neptune was a trident. I have a picture of that. In Hindu mythology, the worshiper of Vishnu has his forehead decorated with a trident. There is a trident right there. And this Masonic writer is telling you that it represents the magical three of Freemasonry, which is triple helix DNA. Here is the trident there and the third eye associated with Eastern mysticism. Marcinic wrote a book called The Path of Empowerment, and she used this symbol to, so you could visualize the path to empowerment, the triple helix. This symbol is associated with a goddess, a Celtic goddess called Seridwen. Seridwen is the goddess of, watch this, transformation. She is the goddess of wisdom and the crone of the Wiccan trinity. She is the keeper of the black cauldron of immortality. Remember, you can live forever. The, uh, I, have, I have people who watch our broadcast in the Netherlands. Okay? And they sent me some information. There is, a, there is a Nordic symbol that a lot of those people would know about called the Valknut. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But it's called the Knot of the Slain. It is a three-strand rope. And it hangs this person from a tree. In Freemasonry, as soon as you walk into the lodge, they hang what's called a cable toe around your neck. It is a three-strand cord around your neck. Guess what it represents? Three-strand DNA. Morals and Dogma says the initiate, was, the initiate was invested with a cord of three threads, so twined as to make three times three and called Zenar. Hence comes our cable toad. That three-fold cord is spoken of in the scriptures. A three-fold cord is not quickly broken. The triple tau of Freemasonry represents the triple helix of three-strand DNA. 
The delta or the pyramid symbol is a symbol for change or a symbol for transformation. Now, I don't understand this little equation here, but apparently mathematically it represents transformation. So we're dealing with images of like three strands or even a pyramid used to denote three strand or triple helix of DNA. The British mathematician and astrologer and occultist John Dee used this symbol as his signature in some of his manuscripts. When a mason writes out words or initials, they always put three dots next to their initials. You'll see it in Masonic manuals. If you see somebody who writes their name this way, they're a mason. And those three dots represent the triple helix. The, the phrase abracadabra is a mystical, magical term. It's not something from cartoons. It's not something that little magicians talk about. It is a magical formula that works and it's always has to do with the three-sided pyramid or the triple helix the hierophant the tarot card of the hierophant let's talk about him for a minute the hierophant teaches matters of faith religion belief and morality he is a wise teacher full of esoteric and occult knowledge he aids in understanding the occult mysteries he holds the keys of transformation he oversees the initiation of people into the mystery religions of ancient Babylon. Now, it said that he holds in his hand the keys of transformation. What is he holding in his hand? A triketra. That is the triple helix. He, hold, he is holding in his hand the keys to transformation. He also has his other hand with three fingers extended. One, two, three. Have you ever seen someone do that before? A religious figure of some kind. In martial arts, when they practice martial arts, you will often find a martial artist centering himself with his three fingers. It's in, it's in every corner of the earth. Uh, in the painting that Leonardo da Vinci painted of Jesus praying to John the Baptist, John the Baptist is blessing him with a three-finger blessing. This image of Sophia or Mary Magdalene or Shekinah, as she is referred to, the wife of God, or the harlot woman of God, the consort of the gods, Isis, Ashtaroth, Ishtar, that's who she's referred to, Venus, Diana. She extends her three fingers in a symbol that she is the giver of immortality and eternal life. Baphomet, on both hands, extends three fingers upwards, and three fingers downwards. He is telling you the secret. Remember, Baphomet is the fusion of the opposites, male and female together. Fusion of the gods with man. Man becoming the divine man, the God man. And it's given in the symbol of the three fingers, the triple helix. This, um, this symbol outside of the McAllister Masonic Temple is indicative of their belief of the number three and its magical power, the triple helix. You've seen the illuminated eye on the capstone on the back of your one dollar bill. Is that a Christian symbol? Is that God's eye? No. It is an occult symbol. It's a Masonic symbol and is referencing illumination. What did the devil promise Eve in the Garden of Eden? Her eyes should be open. He promised her illumination. And the reason why that it's a triangle is that it represents the triple helix. Remember, that delta symbol is a symbol for transformation. Outside of the Masonic Temple in McAllister, Oklahoma, you see the symbols there. By the way, here you see the cross in the crown. Sons of God mingling with the daughters of men is what that represents. Notice the triangle inside the circle. We're going to see that in a little bit. The triple tau inside the triangle inside of the circle. All of these indicative of the triple helix. This tapestry is located in the Vatican, in one of the chapels in the Vatican. Notice that you have the, the, the G, the letter G, or the all-seeing eye, inside of the triangle here. That's three-strand DNA. Right here, you see that this goddess... Huh, imagine the Vatican having a goddess. She is wisdom. She is Sophia. She is Shekinah. She has her three fingers extended here, showing you the secret. By the way, this here is the Ouroboros, the serpent with its tail in its mouth. You know what that means. The heaven on earth temple that I showed you last night. How many rings? 
That is what joins humans with the divine. By the way, the Chinese believed that at one point that this exact place is where the gods came down to the earth and mated with their women. That is exactly what's recorded in Genesis chapter 6. Exactly. The Chinese have a secret societies called the Triads. And these are the mafia secret societies in China. There was a book written in the 1950s called The Mark. Huh. I wonder what it's about. Notice the symbol that they use. The Mark was about man's next phase of evolution. Where man becomes perfected and he becomes godlike. And the book was called The Mark. The uh, 2002 Winter Games in Salt Lake City. Who's headquartered in Salt Lake City? The Mormons. In Salt Lake City, Utah, they erected the Olympic torch. It's three-strand DNA, people. It was a triple helix that they erected in the 2002 Winter Olympics. You saw the movie National Treasure, right? What was the secret? It was the triple helix. That was the treasure that Nicolas Cage in the movie said had to be shared with all mankind. Get it?